Inch Cafe. Recording is now in progress. We're in the Earth Exchange Cafe. So this time we have RG and Carolina from Artivism coming in to talk to us in the cafe. So I invite us all, first of all, to sit back. We've found our favorite chair in the cafe. We are going to sip our favorite hot chocolate or our coffee or our tea or a fizzy drink, whatever it is. And we know that all around us are our compatriots and our colleagues on this wonderful adventure of bringing beauty to wounded places on the land and bringing earth connection. And we feel into just being around people who are willing and ready to listen to the wisdom of our guests. And we bring in the energy of the earth beneath our feet. Mom, we bring in, just a second. Okay, thank you. Just my little boy. And we bring in the energy of the earth, blessing us and grounding us, giving us the strength beneath us to have this conversation dedicated to her with love and with trust and with faith. We feel the air as we breathe in. We feel the inspiration on the wind and the challenges that come to us in the night. And we feel that blessing. And we feel the fire. The cafe is a warm place. It's a place where you wanna to be to drink nice warm drinks, to be rested, to be restored, heat, giving us that alchemical restoration and healing. And we feel that. And we feel the waters, the water of our juice, of our tea. We feel the waters that refresh us, that nourish us, that hold the eternal wisdom that flows through us and through each other. And we welcome them all into this conversation as we move into this now. Welcoming Carolina and welcoming RG, welcoming Trebi, and in looking forward to this beautiful conversation as it unfolds about artivism. So I now hand over to Trebi to introduce you. Thank you, Harriet, for a beautiful introduction. Yeah, so um, there is a remarkable uh, organization, movement, um, course of study at Adelphi University in New York. Uh, and it's very, it's really quite young, um, only I think less than two years old. And uh, it's called Artivism. And our two guests today are the lead uh, creators and uh, movers of Artivism. And they are Carolina Combrenero and Argy Argelorakis. And uh, they're going to talk to the, talk to us about how art and important uh, political and social and environmental causes um, and a lot of passion uh, go together. So uh, welcome to both of you, uh, RG and Carolina. And uh, I'd like to start out by asking each of you to say very briefly what it is, what is artivism? Suppose somebody came to you, they have no idea what artivism is, and uh, they ask you to uh, describe that and to find it. What would each of you say about it? Okay. Professor Harvey, take it away. Okay. Um, so yes, thank you very much for having us here today. Um, we are an independent initiative and we are sponsored by Adelphi University, by Sync for Hope, and by Gottesman Libraries at the Teachers College at Columbia University. Um, what artivism is, artivism is the power that art has. And when we say art, it's all art, whatever your art or however you define art. So it could be visual art, it could be photography, it could be film, any kind of media. It could be your research, uh, anything that through your art form, um, you aim to create awareness and um, inspire change. Carolina. Yes, I would just like to add that the bottom line for artivism is to get people going, to have all of us with our strength in where we are, in our position, share that to inspire 
and to create this social transformation that we are all looking for. And we are very grateful to Ms. Trevi and Ms. Harriet and all of you, the audience, for having us here in this cafe because I'm there. I mean, like, I don't know about you guys, but with that beautiful description that Ms. Harriet gave us, I'm right here with all of you present, enjoying that wonderful coffee or tea. <laughs> Well, I, I, I will say where I was when you were saying that, other than the hot coffee, when you were talking about the, you know, the cool breeze um, and just being there, I was transformed to the beach in Greece, uh, where all you, you look out at this endless, you know, the, the Aegean as far as you can go and you feel that breeze uh that's where you transformed me and thank you yes thank you for that i, I needed that it's so cold in new york today <laughs> well so as i said in the beginning um uh, our artivism only began less than two years ago i think in fact i think it was only about one year ago one year it began in the time of covid and what's so remarkable about it, if you look at your website and start following some of the videos, is that it, it, it's, it's not only about art. It's not only about uh, social uh, studies. It's not only about the environment. But as you're going to discuss through, as we have our conversation today, it inc includes so many different kinds of fields. I mean, baking and music and sound, and, and, and you're going to talk about that. But... I, I would like to know, uh, Caroline, I believe the idea came from you. Could you just tell us how you got came up with the idea and why you think it's taken off so beautifully? Well, I'll start with the second part. It's taken off as is because of the passion that we all have and the want for that transformation. Now, it was, uh, you know, at school that there was this organization and we were working on different programming and one of those programs uh, came about with a nice panel discussion about the same topic, the power of art for social transformation. Then from there, we had an exhibit. And from there, one of the people um, engaged in that is uh, here a shout out to Professor Wyda. She was like, what about we did a book? So we came up with the book. We have various authors in that book. And then from there, we're like, wouldn't this be a nice series that, so that people could share their experience firsthand instead of just in the book. So another shout out here to Ms. Govan from the Goddessman's Library. She's the godmother of this initiative. Like, how about we reach out to Adelphi University? And there we came about Professor Ardry and Dr. Nate that so kindly welcomed the idea. And from there, hard work, dedication, teamwork 100%. Mm -hmm. And a wonderful, wonderful uh, thank you to Adelphi for uh, welcoming us with such broad, um, broad arms, such a nice embrace. And of course, I wouldn't like to pass this opportunity to thank Professor Argy for her mm. love and passion to the topic, and not only the topic, but for the action that it has driven it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Um you have a presentation that you're going to give us. And uh, we're, so we're, it, it's a group of a few slides and each one I think is gonna serve as a kind of a, 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 a diving board to explore further. So would you like to, to start that now? And, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move the conversation along from this. Okay, here we go. Okay, so thank you everyone. Thank you for being here. And um, please feel free um, to um, join in in between the slides to ask whatever questions or make a comment. Um, so all of our presentations for those that agree to be recorded, and I believe we had all but maybe one or two, uh, can be found on YouTube at Artivism for Shared Humanity. So um, wait a minute, before you, before you yes. go on, um, who are these people? I mean, are oh, they students at Adelphi or what? They are from all over. They are, um, um, several are those who contributed um, to the uh, Maxine Green, um, uh, I guess, conference, right? Or seminar that Carolina was just speaking about. Um, others were Adelphi University uh, professors. They were people that we reached out to or have reached out to us. 
Uh, we have presenters from the US, from Ecuador, from France, um, from Greece. And I said, I think I said that. Am I forgetting anybody, Carolina? The UK. Ecuador, um, Costa Rica. Costa Rica, yes. Russia. Mm -hmm. um, so they're um, artivists as you are. You are artivists. Your art form is this forum. Um, so we would like for you to consider yourselves as artivists. You are creating awareness. You are inspiring change. You're inspiring those that are viewing this now to take action and do something um, to be a part of this change. Uh, for the first time this semester, we actually had, or this season, uh, we did have a student who was a senior at Adelphi University present his research on our forum. Um, and you could see there's one, I don't know how well you can see this, there's one Movement Matters, which was dance. Um, she is a dancer from the Philippines. Um, we have, oh my goodness, Carolina, we have the Talisman Project from Columbia University, uh, where she creates talismans for students, um, where, um, I mean, how much can we say? How much time do we have? We can go on forever. The Deaf Music Project, which we'll talk about later, which is I mean, you, you get goosebumps with many of these yes, um, videos. I mean, just oh, looking at this, you get a sense them. of yeah. the sensory safety in, um, in an art museum with Dr. Sorokin, who is a neurobiologist who creates safe spaces for those that have um, sensory issues. So it's those who are, you know, autistic, that have dementia, that have Alzheimer's. So we have inclusion in spaces like museums. It should be museums and, 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 and you know, these areas and institutions where all should be welcome. And many museums do have these safe spaces, but nobody ever stops to think that to get from the front door of these institutions, right? Uh, to get to that safe space, you have to go through many people and elevators and staircases. He looks at heat maps hmm. at the traffic and gives them that pathway to this safe space. He wow. looks at the colors. Uh, on the walls, which may trigger a reaction. Um, and he found that yellow is one that you would not use, but a wine color, that deep burgundy color is one that is soothing. Um, and let's see who else we had, uh, a lawyer oh, and a visual yeah, artist. Yes, from um, the Amazon with the Chevron spill. Yes. These two incredibly brave individuals who put their lives at risk. I mean, these are people who really put their lives at risk by speaking out against <laughs> corporations and, you know, and, and, and institutions and, and, and uh, you know, policymakers and, you know, heavily paid lawyers who come out and, and speak their mind. Uh, these two individuals help create murals through uh -huh. these areas that were impacted by Chevron and the oil spill. Carolina, do you want to add anything? Definitely. I would like to um, take this space to thank all of our presenters yes. and this season's presenters, future presenters, because all of them are doing the hard work. They're all actually in action in their communities, in their spaces, in their topics. As Professor Archie says, some of them might be more theoretical. But through that theory, bringing these ideas into academia, we are also changing, making that change in, let's say, um, for example, the Talisman Project, Ms. Uh, Belicio was mentioning, when she graduated, uh, when she was going to put the hood on for her doctoral program, the hood has to go on a little button, right? And that, it was a sign that her as a woman was not supposed to be there because mm. it's expected that you're going to have a color shirt that will have a button from where you can hang your hood. So something as simple as that, but yet when you bring it to the attention and more people start questioning and asking why is it that we have to be mindful that I have a little button so that I can wear my hood at the graduation, that's what this is about, to raise those questions. And as, as on the other side as well, as Professor Archie was saying, Ms. Sanchez, that one you can see is on just democracy, on constitutional practices. They're putting their life on the line okay. because that is taking place in the Amazon in Ecuador. Right. And, and it is a very hot topic, you know, but yeah. another so, one so, that well, I just want to just want to interject a question here. All of these things and the graphics are beautiful. So we want to get into that a little bit. Um, 
can anybody watch these? Are they available for anybody to watch? And how can they do that? Yep, you can just go to the YouTube channel, Professor Arjik. Would you uh, tell us, please? Yes, the YouTube channel is Artivism is one word, and then the number four shared humanity together. So Artivism stays for shared humanity. Um, and they're all, they're available to all. I, I do my best. We do our best um, to, you know, uh, um, create the, the, the videos with in the same week that the presenters present. So I just uploaded uh, just a few minutes ago, actually, Monday's event. So they're open for, for all to see. And, um, you know, if you have any um, questions, you can contact us at um, artivism at adelphi.edu. Okay. I would like to take a second here, Mr. Trevor, if we, if we may, to bring your attention and the audience's attention to the one uh, in regards to language. Um, that was presented by Dr. Archer, that also yes. would like to give her a great thank you for her contributions to artivism. And that presentation explores poetry and literature in original languages. Because I know the Earth Day, Mother Tongue is coming up soon. So for those interested in that topic, that is on our YouTube channel. There, we had poets mm -hmm. write it and say it in their original language. As such, the point here that I'm trying to make is that we did not rush it. We did not have a time limit because mm -hmm. in some events you might be like, oh, you know, it's all this language because we only have a certain amount of time, but yet you're working from a translation. And in that translation, you lose sometimes the soul of the original artwork, right? So just to be mindful of that topic as well, of translations, of uh, also research, right? That's another main topic of when you do a Google search or you're working on a, re on a research project, involve a little more time so that you can look deeper into other sources that then could be cited more so that they can also become part of that main academia canon that perhaps we need to start building more strongly and that includes more time on your part. Right, thank you, yes. So let's move on and, and learn about sure. some of these individually. Okay, um, so the first poster was designed by an Adelphi University student. Um, the second one, we decided to put it out there. And we asked uh, many, uh, I guess, schools, right? And many of our collaborators, if they would like to bring this um, to their students, their young people, um, to design the poster for the fall of 2021. UTPL in Loja, um, Ecuador had, uh, I think it was like eight or 10 students design uh, the graphics for the fall poster. And this is the one we selected. We don't say the winner, uh, um, the one we selected because they were all winners. That's like, that, that's a, a word that we don't really use. We are all winners, right? But one needed to be selected, and it was uh, Rafaela Marie Borrero Nal's um, poster. I do want to say that for each of these students, if you go to the landing page at adelphi.edu slash artivism, and you scroll down to the fall 2021 posters, and the same for the spring, you will find each and every submission and a little blurb by the student who created them. So we give them all time and appreciation and acknowledgement of their hard work. So for the spring, this spring, uh, we did the same thing again. And a school in Greece answered. And I have to confess, uh, when they answered, I thought it was maybe a middle school or a high school. And um, they, they told us that they would be working with their students for about two months on what artivism is, what is art, that everybody has, should have the freedom to express themselves, that art is a human right. So again, I thought, okay, this has to be a high school student. It was four to six year olds. They were four to six year olds. Amazing. And they had two months of art lessons and human rights. And they, one of the things they were most fascinated with was the knotted gun at the UN. And what's interested in- so what's What interested at the UN? In Wait a minute. You, what, say, I don't know what you mean. The knotted gun. It's a sculpture 
that stands before oh, yes, the yes, building. Yes. And I was. Um, it looks like it's a large sculpture. And yes. the barrel of the gun is twisted around like somebody. Exactly. When yes. presenting this to my students and others here, they were like, what's the knotted gun? And, you know, we're, we're most people don't know. And these young people, these little ones from, you know, these little five, four, five, six year olds were learning this. Um, so this is what they designed together. It was a group collage. Um, and we will show you a video later at the end. Um, just a, a few of our networks and presenters. This is just a select few. Uh, we have Arturo O'Farrell, um, who, um, oh, well, Carolina, you could talk a little bit about Arturo. Definitely. Uh, he created this movie about Fandango at the Wall, where he united musicians on the U.S. side and the Mexican side playing together through the the uh, barrier that is down there in the Oh, in the wonderful. Frontier. You can check that out. I think he has it on, uh, he said on Netflix, right? Professor it's Arturo? HBO. It's HBO Max. HBO Max. And oh, it's okay. called Fandango at the Wall. And if you want, I mean, his his recording of his presentation um, a little less than a year ago is on our YouTube channel. He's yeah. he's very interesting and yeah. fun to listen to. He's very animated. Yeah. And he too, he took longer than the one hour. Um, we have Laura Anderson Barbata, Carolina. Uh, yes, she's um, a Mexican artist that works uh, from the US, from Mexico as well. And she works with textiles and also very interestingly with uh, recycled materials to raise awareness on various topics. For example, for her presentation in Artivism, she talked about the color indigo and how that is a symbol of uh, the police force or security around the world. But yet she is raising the question of what it has become in our current times. So and she also does um, happenings or presentations in mm -hmm. in the public sphere to raise this awareness so i would definitely recommend for uh, all of you to go and check her out uh the others are felicia's promise uh felicia Fen uh, funrose um started an organization less than a year ago where she mentors young girls um age 12 to 18 and um i am um a member of her board um, I do the arts aspect of it. And uh, her group, we stay with these young girls, even though we just started, our intent is to stay with them for as long as they need us. And they're, they're young women of color um, who need that extra support. They need that mentorship. They need somebody they know they can talk to, um, they can identify with. Um, and, and we, we, hope to inspire them to continue with their studies, whatever their studies may be, and stay with them up until they can just, you know, we, just be on their own, but we will always be there. And we have a series of workshops. Um, they will, will swing into now Bake Back America, which- oh, Wait a um, minute, but, but, but with Felicia's promise, so how is that different from any other kind of like counseling or support kind of service organization where is it's the art of it very different we um we stay with them uh we have their um um guardian because most of them do not live with their parents right um they're also so we've created a network where their caretaker um our mentorship the programs we design which are nutrition art um, science. If somebody needs extra help with their homework, um, we get them the help. If they need supplies for these art programs, Bake Back America, another one of the organizations we work with, helps supply them with it. They're different because they are there from the beginning that they come in up until they leave. Uh, we so don't give up on them. Well, so I'm just, what you're making me think of is, um, there, there's an artist, I don't know if you're familiar with her, her name is uh, Meryl uh, Lederman Eucalys, and yeah. she's an American artist, and she, she, she's most famous for a project that she did, oh, I think it was at least 30 years ago, where she went around New York City and she shook hands with every single sanitation worker in the entire city mm. and thanked him for his work, thanked him for his service. And so her, her I mean, and I'm wondering if this is tied in with Felicia's promise, which is why I'm bringing it up. Mm -hmm. Her idea was that 
um, everything can be art. You know, the, the way you live your life can be creative. But so, um, and, and she came to that realization because she was a new mother and she felt like she had one life as an artist <sighs> and one life as a mother, you know, feeding the baby, picking the baby up, changing the diapers. And she wondered like, wh what's the unity between all of this? So, um, Definitely, Ms. Ravi, I think you hit it right on the dot. Yes. That is uh, what our definition of artivism is. And that's why also Big Back America is here, because their art is inspiring people to take action. That organization, like Felicia promised, uh, you know, are very new person, you know, less than two years ago or so. But the point is that they have done so much because they're able it's to incredible. Inspire. They're able to bring that fire within all of us to ignite it, right? Okay, and that's, that that's action. Great. So that's the point right there. That's artivism. I'm just gonna mention here uh, our the, like this initiative, right? It's not about a conference um, session of series, right? No, what it is about is igniting that fire within, so that all of us, where we are with our means, can be that change. Yeah, right. And, that, and that's the art. That's, that's the art. Igniting Melissa the fire, yeah. Yeah. Melissa Brown Subin is the founder of Bake Back America. She is this powerhouse who inspires young people to design their own initiatives and then helps them, supports them to um, propel it, to actually put it in, in, in action. So she has um, um, uh, these workshops. She has students creating um, bags uh, after the fire, there was, you know, that, that, that fire in, um, where was it? Was it in the Bronx, Carolina? I don't remember. It was Bronx, Brooklyn. Yes. Um, the, uh, one of her young people thought we're going to get snack bags and we're going to deliver them to the firemen who went and, you know, uh, put out the fire in this building. And they did wow. that. They, they create, they, they put together hundreds of these bags. They bake, they collect clothing um, for those that need them, other materials. So there, she inspires young people to um, create these initiatives and then helps them actually follow them through. Um, the other three, which work with um, individuals that are incarcerated and those that are in re-entry programs are Music on the Inside, Network Support Services, and Main Inside Out. And you can find each of these also on our YouTube um, videos. Again, if you have any questions or if you, you're confused as to which video you would like to see, you could just email us at artivism at adelphi.edu and we'll send you the link to the one that, you know, you're, you're interested in. And of course, the Wright Collective, um, uh, Alyssa Wright, who is just an amazing woman. Uh, she's an artivist. She used her theater background um, to create the Wright Collective um, and her initiative. Do you want to say something about um, Ms. Wright, Carolina? Sure. So um, her background, as Professor Art mentioned, is in theater, right? And theater. she was like, how can, yeah, theater. So she's like, how can I merge the two? Because now I'm more into development, you know, like um, raising money for events, organizations, and so on. And she came to the conclusion that sometimes organizations that have very nice missions, very interesting, powerful missions, kind of don't know per se how to go about the ask for the, uh, you know, supporters of the organization. And she came about using theater techniques to do that. So just think of it as if you're going to a presentation, right? And she shares those techniques and she is like, it's not just um, potential support that you have in front of you. It's a whole scene. It's a part of a play that will lead more people into believing into your mission, right? And so she starts putting all this inspiration into that ask for the um, supporters, right? The potential sponsors and changes the way of seeing it. But it's not only that, she also, in this right collective, talks about the power that each person has, that you don't have to be a multimillionaire to be that change in funding change, right? If you want to be on that side. You can be a high school student. She has worked with various high schools where they start a high school circle of giving and through there teach the students, right? That you have this financial power at that level to be the change that you want to see in the world. And she 
She was the one who introduced, yes. I should mention, artivism and radicals right for a hard time. So we yes, are very yes. grateful. Oh, there you go. So he yes. also, um, she also helped with funding um, with Maine Inside Out. And uh, we'll talk about that a little later. Um, so the next thing is internships community and networking. Uh, many of our presenters, um, uh, because we have this policy, I guess policy, right? You could say policy of reciprocity. Uh, we are giving you this platform um, to present. What we ask is just to make yourselves available, um, not in an uh, exuberant way, uh, but perhaps a student may need an internship, resources, a mentor, um, be there for them. And I have to say, everyone we reached out to and connected has been there, not just for our students, but for each other. Mm -hmm. So we've created this incredible network that then the, the two of them take off on their own and bring others in. And we just step aside. We're not involved in everything they then do, but we're just building this like... <laughs> <laughs> this incredible network. Um, we have um, Faith Coleman, who is, uh, uh, she's in her second year at Adelphi University, who's a dancer. She provided a, uh, she uh, created a workshop for Felicia's Promise. We have um, um, Rowan McKiernan, who was a poet, uh, who is, also did some work for Felicia's Promise. Uh, do you want to say something about Rowan Carolina, oh, and how yes. shy she was. She would never share her poetry. And mm -hmm. now her poetry is at the Greek consulate um, in an exhibit. Yes, go ahead, Carolina. Okay. That's, that's right. That's all. And that's another point of artivism. Artivism is a multidisciplinary, multi generational endeavor where it we don't mind about categorizing or titles, you know, and that's one thing that we're very emphatic about in regards of, um, you know, like, oh, some people might put some emphasis because you have these titles or you have this experience. For in artivism, everyone is the same. It's what you bring to the table, what matters, right? So here we have uh, Roa McKiernan that she was a student ambassador for one of the presenters. And she was like, mm, let me see, I don't know, I'm also a poet, but I'm not too sure about sharing. And we're like, come on, let's go, you can do this, let's go. And she, she's like, all right, I'm gonna share it. And since then, Forget about it. You're going to see later on in the slides that she's also a founder of the Artivist and Club at Adelphi University. So from being a little shy to, like Professor Archie said, having her poetry at the Greek Consulate in our exhibit that includes uh, artists from all over the world, to now also sharing another poem to, uh, tomorrow at another uh, presentation that we're having. And then we move to the Deaf Music Project. Julia Silvestri, um, she's a professor at Columbia University, and Yiru Chen, who is also an amazing filmmaker. Um, if you can Google Yiru Chen and find some of her work, um, you, 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 you really do get goosebumps. It is so inspiring. And what they did is they brought um, music to those that are hearing impaired. Um, and that video is up also. Um, they put packs on um, on those who cannot hear. And um, well, what do you mean by packs? The music. What kind of pack? They're like a. It's almost like a vest. It's a vest. And when music is played, they feel the vibration. I see. And to see these young people's faces when they're feeling the music, right? Okay. And they become a part of it. It's just. It's incredible. It's so incredible. presumably for a lot of them, it, it's like that's the first time they've ever really oh, been yes. exposed to music. Yes, uh, because it's, you know, you, you they do feel or could feel vibrations, but because it's so close to their body, they feel every beat. And wow. that reaction is on this video. It's in this documentary. Oh, oh extraordinary. And they, yes. And uh, there is a part two to this that they are working on. Um, and well, you I mean, had a couple. Mm -hmm. I just yes, yes. Add a couple Caroline, points. I didn't hear what you said. Yeah, I just want to add a focal, uh, couple of points here so that uh, the audience gets the, the bigger scope. Uh, this is a conference that used to take place yes. free COVID at uh, Columbia University. It's a team of researchers that are working on 
the universal design of music. Because, like, think about it. When you go to a concert, have you sat there and thought, hmm, what would happen if I can't hear if I'm part of listening? Right? Can I, would, would I be able to enjoy this experience? As, you know, for buildings, they say we have to have ramps so that everyone can come in, right? The universal design is applied to our infrastructure, but why not to our arts programming, right? right. So that's what they're focusing on. And then from there, they came up with the like, uh, potentials, right? Like uh, they did, um, uh, how do you call this, a, uh, like a, a, a class, a class uh, program where the professors or the teachers could apply various techniques to make it more interactive for the students, right? Like Professor Argelaraki said also, uh, those vests that vibrate, right? But another interesting part that, um, that I learned from this presentation was that they said sometimes at various events they might have people trying to translate via sign language the music, but they were like, how can you do that? Music has to be felt. It has to be mm -hmm. experienced within, and you're the one that has to come up with that. In, like, how are you going to translate emotion, basically, right? You yeah, can exactly. translate the words. You can translate the music. Like this is in in an uh, A, a C, or a B flat, whatever. But the emotion cannot be translated, and that was their main point. I attended one of the conferences, and let's say, for example, some of the techniques that they were trying for big arenas where. Uh, lights you know that dance to the beat so that everyone can kind of like follow that beat or mm -hmm. also visuals with strings of color that also will dance or more vibration like stomping your feet and so on but it's just being mindful like we um, have been mentioning throughout the the presentation today artivism is just being mindful about everyone and everyone's um different um you know, perspectives and points of view on so many topics, right? Goes back to the presentation I was mentioning in regards to translation, right? It's very similar, just here is about hearing and the other one is about language and the translation and what is lost in that translation. Right, uh, and the, the students created a video also mm -hmm. um, where they are signing the words to, I forget which Lady Gaga song it is, but to watch them, yes. you know, the ones that have the, 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 the vest on, they're dancing and they're singing through sign is really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I would love to just tell you, if you're going to watch one of these recordings, watch this, but they're all unique. Mm -hmm. They're all inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, that's the deaf music documentary. And then a little bit more going back to Bake Back America, um, they, um, one of their initiatives was um, first generation students needing professional clothing. So uh, Miss Subin contacted us and said, would you like professional clothing? It's first generation students day in two, three weeks. We have all these clothes for students that need clothes for internships, they need clothes for their work, they can't afford them. So it's almost like this, uh, this thing we don't really think about that for a student to go to a private university, they have the means to fund it. They don't. Many are on scholarships, many are taking exuberant student loans to get an education. Professional clothing is not something they're going to spend money on because they don't have that money. Um, and it is something they need. They can't go on an internship with just jeans and sneakers. So we got the criminal justice um, club at Adelphi. We came up with the idea with Rowan, the poet and other students to, it's time to create an artivism club at Adelphi. I'm sorry, I didn't put the logo in. I missed it. Um, and, oops, sorry. Okay. And um, we, picked up the clothes, we brought them to Columbia, uh, to, to Adelphi University, we put it out there, students were coming in, they were allowed to take whatever they needed, no questions asked, um, no limit to what they can take, they were all very respectful of each other, not to come and grab everything and go, they took what they needed, what they could fit in, um, and we ran out of clothes by like the, the, the end of the first day, so then just how things work, right? How God brings things together. We started getting calls from staff at Adelphi saying, you know what? We just saw a flyer up at such and such building. 
I just picked up a bunch of clothes I'm not going to wear from the dry cleaners. Do you want them? I'll bring them tomorrow. So we regrouped our criminal justice club and our artivism club is like, go to this office, go to that office. And everybody started bringing professional clothes in. Um, and I don't have the after, I should put them in, right, Carolina? Um, the after where there's really nothing left. There was nothing left. It was unbelievable. They came, they took ties and shirts. There were men's suits, there were women's dresses, belts. It was just an amazing. And all the students that came in were like, can you do this again? Can yeah, right. So it's oh. like it's it's like making um, creating an it's like creating a self that is appropriate to go and look for a job interview. So it's a kind of a a, a, a recreation or a creation or an enhancement of of the of the of the of the body, so that the the gifts and the talents that are within the person can be more relaxed as right. they're represented. Right. And then not only that, but all the teamwork, because this teamwork. project came about teamwork. And that is um, another one of uh, Artivism's like pillars. It's all teamwork, dedication, right? And here, like if Bay Back America couldn't have done it, Adelphi University providing the space, then Professor RJ had a driver volunteer <laughs> to bring the clothes because it wasn't in the same area. So it's just, what can we do as a society? We all come together and share our talents, if share our resources, right? Imagine yeah. how much we can multiply, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so next, what do we have next? Uh, next is um, Music on the Inside. Uh, Music on the Inside was founded by um, Alina Bloomgarden. She was in the New York Times less than a month ago about her organization. What she does is bring um, famous jazz musicians into the criminal justice system behind the walls, right? Um, and teach music to those that are incarcerated. But then she also teaches music, her, her, her um, volunteers, collaborators, right? Also teach uh, music to them when they are on the outside, when they're in reentry programs. So they also presented last year, um, this is uh, 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 a man, Dawood Rahman, um, who was a musician, he was incarcerated when he was very young. Um, and later on in life, when Ms. Bloomgarden brought this program into the uh, where he was, uh, he discovered music again. So he, we try and, um, I, I don't want to say help. Help is not the right word. We try to encourage her work and him also to continue with his music. So every opportunity we have. Uh, as artivism for one of our programs, we just call Miss Bloom Garden and say, you know what? But that would like to perform at this event. Would he like? And, and that's all he does is perform. There's no questions. There's no judgment. We respect him for what he is today. We don't define him by what his past was, whatever that may be. Uh, it's where he's at today. And we're giving him um, that little boost that he needs to keep going. It's music that's going to keep you, you know, alive and happy. Um, so, yes, Carolina. Two interesting uh, anecdotes that Ms. Bloomgarden has shared through the presentations is that one of them, she says, the heart is our first instrument, right? Our beat. So that's so powerful. I always like to repeat it. And another one is that Ms. Bloomgarden takes all these opportunities to raise awareness about the criminal justice here in the U.S. because she's based here in New York. But uh, thanks to Zoom now, she says, yes. she has made it nationally. She has audiences and salons every um, Sunday that the audience comes from now basically around the world, right? But in situ, it was here in New York. But now, thanks to the pandemic, she says, you know, it was like an, a silver lining. is expanding and they hope to reach even outside of the U.S. But um, all of these opportunities are to just make people think about the criminal justice. In one talk mm -hmm. that I attended, not uh, with Ms. Bloomberg, but another um, speaker was that, you know, we always hear the criminal justice system needs to be repaired, right? You mm -hmm. probably heard that a lot of times. But he, this speaker, um, he said, 
it actually is working perfectly as it was designed. Mm. And think about that. How powerful was that line? It's yeah. not that we need to fix it. It's that we need to change it completely because as of now, it is working as if it was set up to be. And in that presentation, that speaker said so many things that, you know, you never hear. Like, for example, that basically um, all of the, uh, the furniture that you see at DMVs and all that is made yes. by incarcerated people. Also, another thing was that if we were to pay for all that labor, we couldn't afford it. So technically what he mentioned was it is this modern slavery, right? Yeah. And what can we do? What can we do to break that? What is in our hands? What is the power that we have as an individual to change that? Right. So we're right. We have about ten more minutes. Okay. So uh, just to keep this, to keep. We are just about done. I just wanted to point out Maine Inside Out, who works with juveniles, um, and it's a prison for young people. Uh, what's crazy to even think about is these young people mostly. Um, um, have other issues, right? It's not these these crimes that they may have committed. They're put away because their their mental illnesses are not treated, so they're put in in prisons. Uh, their solitary confinement. Uh, they don't get the treatment that they need. When they come out, they then continue or or discover new crimes, right? And and, and it just puts them back. They're in this like hamster wheel. Um, so main inside out works with them through the arts, through theater, through music, spoken word, poetry. Um, so when they come out, they continue that and they can express themselves through their art, whatever that may be. And that is their release. Uh, the other is um, network services. Uh, Dr. Zaccarini, Art Jones and Nashan ja Jackson. Um, Art, uh, sorry, Art Jones is the filmmaker and Nashan Jackson was imprisoned for many, many years. I think it was like 25 or 30 years for a crime he did not commit. He did not commit the crime. He came, he was working with network services when he was on the inside upon his appeal and release, like 25 or so years later, he now works with network services. And some of our upcoming um, um, presentations, we continue with inclusiveness. Uh, for those that have disabilities, we have um, a woman presenting in um, May who um, uh, created a museum, a museum, not just an exhibit within a museum. All the exhibits or several pieces from the exhibit um, are accessible to those that are visually impaired. So they created 3D models of war halls. Right. These are war halls and other artworks, original artworks. They can go in with the headset and by feeling, they can feel what they're hearing and what they can't see. Um, Carolina. An interesting one also, it's um, next week actually on Monday, the 21st. It's going to be about sustainable fashion. Uh, as you know, nowadays, um, if you go to buy a shirt and it's gone in... <laughs> not even a year, right? So what happens to that clothing, right? How is it affecting our environment? The speaker is uh, uh, in, in golf in textile production, and uh, she did a research in regards to human, environmental, and animal rights, and how all of those play a part in the fashion industry. So what she's working currently in practice, not just theoretically, is in creating garments with more sustainable techniques, including uh, new uh, technologies such as laser cutters and so forth. And I would, I would just as a little plug, I'm going to be presenting on March 14th, which is that's right. Yes, here. that's yeah. right. Yes, I think you're here. No, no. Nope. Are you someplace? No. Okay, I just kind of like picked it very quickly. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, about radical joy for hard times, and about why. Yes. Um, why it's we do feel sad when something happens to the yes. places we love and we are not powerless to change either ourselves our attitudes or our relationship with the place there you go you're an artivist <laughs> red joy is an artivist yes 
Uh, so tomorrow we will be a panelist, one of four panelists um, for the UUA International um, Resources at the UU office at the United Nations. Um, it is a presentation on using art as advocacy providing healing, building community, inspiring social change. Um, you need to register for the event and it begins at one o'clock tomorrow. So we would like to close with a little video clip. Before by you do that, before, yes. you, before you close with your video, I want to go to Harriet and find out if there are any questions from yes. anybody or comments. So um, I'm no yeah, not, not at the moment. Um, we've had some viewers um, just watching avidly, but no no questions have come up. Um, but I've just been really enjoying listening and uh, feeling the, the, the threads, the subtle threads underneath all of this that's weaving yes. everything together, starting to feel a tapestry become, becoming um, obvious through your sort of the way that you've been weaving things together. So I just wanted to thank you so much for that. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. So do, do show us your video and sure. then tell us this also. Is, yeah. Uh, this is the video from the kindergarten class um, that um, created the spring poster. Let me yeah, just, great. Uh, give me one second. I need to. Um, hold on. I'm sorry. Okay. Let me just put it very quickly from the beginning and. Here we go. That was the teacher's hard work there. That's her artivism, how she leads her class. That can be your artivism. If you're a teacher, remember, yes. you have so much power in your hands to inspire all those students. Yeah, that's be really beautiful. I mean, the way they, the way they, it's almost like, you know, they, 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 they spoke from the point of view of the gun. They, yes, they, they did. Yes, yeah. it's in the artwork. You don't always see it. There's the gun in each of these little frames and, and but then, then the, yeah you know you are you recognize it but then the way they describe it they're yes. saying you know that 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 the gun is the gun wants to be something else the gun doesn't want to yes. make people cry anymore it's really my goodness it's so it's really extraordinary and it's not even translated directly it, it, like all the words are not translated because they didn't they wanted to keep it short also mm -hmm. and it would be too much to read and to keep in with the pace that the children were speaking um which is unfortunate but hearing it in greek also like for me is just so powerful so powerful. you're a greek just in case anybody didn't uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and that ties it very nicely to this um this week's presentation with yes. uh miss melissa where she mentioned that 
you don't need permission. You can do whatever you want. So I would like to just add those comments that she shared of saying, you can be and do whatever you want to our audience today. Don't be afraid. Just take that step. Be the change you want to be. We always close our presentations with a takeaway. And if you go to our Instagram, Professor R, would you share that with us, please? Uh, yes, the Instagram is at Artivism, the number four shared humanity. So it's all together. It's at Artivism, the number four shared humanity. So there you will Thank find you. a nice visual with the takeaways of each presentation of what you missed. And Great. just Thank reading you. those, you will get so inspired for action. Well, thank you both so much for, for being you. with us and um, sharing this remarkable work. And again, I mean, just to think of something that has taken off the way it has in a year across so many disciplines, inspiring so many people in different ways, you know, it really is extraordinary. So um, thank you so much. Thank you. And, thank you for um, having us. And please you know, feel free to contact us if you would like to present also. If you have an initiative or an organization, and it really could be young people, it could be a high school student. We did have a high school student, right, Carolina? Yes. Um, contact us. Yep. And, 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 and Carrie, so I just wanted to know, excuse me, I'm for interrupting, but we're almost out of time. And Harriet, I know you have a little boy there that's mm -hmm. wanting some attention, but I wonder if you are going to be able to take us out with your one of your beautiful closings. Yes. Okay, right, let's have a go. Are we going to say goodbye because we're going to now, we're going to close our eyes again and step back into that warm, cozy cafe. But the fire has died down and we've finished our drinks and the conversation has come to a close, just like a river that has run. It's time to gently let it all flow and pass us by. And we thank the ground for holding us and giving us the earth to, to sustain us. And we thank the air for inspiring us and helping us breathe to express with the words that came to us. And we thank the fire for giving us the inspiration and the passion to speak from our hearts. And we thank, what's the last one? The water to help us continue and continue flowing to flow, flow, flow out eternally. And so now we step away, walk out of the cafe, and the last person shuts the door. Thank you, Harriet. Thank, Thank you. you, Carolina. Thank you, RG. And everybody do check out Artivism and their remarkable work and watch on March 14th when I'm going to be talking about Radical Joy for Hard Times. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hehehe. <laughs>